Welcome to Mrs. Peach Thrifty Levine. I'm so happy you're here today. Today is hashtag Tea Tuesday. This is hosted by my friend Patty at Life with Patty. Go over and check and see what she posts today and what everybody else in this awesome collaboration post. Today I am drinking my usual coffee with my collagen in it and my protein in it and a little bit of wonderful creamer in it and it makes for a delicious drink. Today I thought we would do another president. We are on, let's see if I can remember, our 31st president was Herbert Hoover. Here is a picture of him. This is from the little book that I got at Dollar Tree. If you ever come across it, you might want one. I've looked since then and I have not found any, but you never know what you're going to find sometimes there. Okay, here's what this says. Herbert Hoover became the president after many years of helping people around the world during World War I. He had been in charge of getting food and supplies to the people trapped by fighting in the country of Belgium. After World War I and later after World War II, he continued his work to send food and help to those that needed it. He was a hero to many people. But Hoover was president during a difficult time in the United States. And it was called the, called the Great Depression. Millions of Americans lost their jobs, their homes, and their savings. They needed help from their government. But no one was sure the best way for the government to help. The things Hoover tried did not work. He continued his life of public service after he was president. He was born August 10th, 1874 in Iowa. He served from 1929 to 1933. His vice president was Charles Curtis, and he died in 1964. Here's a couple of little, the, did you know? Did you know that the Hoover Dam, named after the president, was the tallest dam in the world in 1935? And then here's a picture of a telephone. And it says, Hoover was the first president to have a phone on his desk in the, in the Oval Office. This is what a phone looked like at that time. Laura gave me this other set of the fan of the presidents. And here is a picture of him. His whole name was Herbert Clark. Hoover will be telling you about his wife. The hunt for my glasses. So I'll put them on to read a little bit of this other said that was different. It does talk about him helping other countries. When the first world war broke out, he was appointed chairman of the American Relief Commission in London and proceeded to arrange engineer, if you will, the return of some 200,000 Americans stranded abroad. In no time, he was securing the food and all the other things. Now, let's turn to the back of this, see what it says. From 1921 to 1929, he served as Secretary of Commerce for Harding and Coolidge. He helped with the, the feeding of many and helped with the troops and all that. Okay, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about his wife. I've got this book from Carol with Crinkle Paths. Um, it's been a wonderful. We've enjoyed this part of it, too. And I'm going to, um, I will be going back. Let me show you the picture of her. I will be going back and telling about the, the wives that I did not, originally have this book for 
when I finish this series. And then I'll put a link for those, those videos that you, you might would like to see. Okay, Le Lou Henry Hoover. And she was born in um, 1874 in Waterloo, Iowa. She was Irish English. Her husband, Herbert C. Hoover, and they had two children. And uh, she was 54 when he became inauguration. In 1944, of a heart attack. She grew up in the hills of Southern California. She's a Californian. She was an excellent horseman and loved to hike and camp. She met Herbert Hoover in geology class at Stanford University. They found a lot of things in common. They both had been born in Iowa and they loved the outdoors. They both were earning their geology geology degrees. Herbert and Lou were married in 1899 and set off to, for China where Herbert had a job in the mining company. Herbert traveled the world as a geologist and Lou always working by his side. They went to China and, ba and Burma and India, Egypt and Australia. They, carry, they were carrying their two babies in baskets. Lou loved this adventurous life and worked hard maintaining a household and helping her husband with his work. World War I found them in Western Europe where they began working on various war relief programs. When they finally returned home, the were well known, politically experienced, and quite rich. Lou worked her formidable energies to Washington when Hoover was appointed to the Harding Cabinet in 1921. She became involved in women's organizations, making speeches and ur urging women to make their own careers and get involved in politics. She even made a brief speech for her husband's presidential campaign. After Hoover became president in 1929, Lou filled the White House with objects from her travels and restored several neglected rooms. She insisted on the best of everything and gave elegant lunches and parties. The flow of guests was endless and there was often company for breakfast as well as lunch. The depression destroyed the first family's lavish lifestyle and Hoover's bid re-election as well. Although Lou was disappointed, she looked forward to returning to California. She was a lifelong supporter of the Girl Scouts, where, and when Hoover left the White House, they gave their summer home and Blue Ridge Mountain to the government to use as a Girl Scout and Boy Scout camp. In California, she resumed her outdoor activities occasionally. She spoke at women's groups and got involved with the community projects. She died of a sudden heart attack after attending a, a concert in New York just before her 70th birthday. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, I don't even know how long this is. I'm getting ready to, to go to my appointment to get my root canal. So when you see this, I will have already had it done. And I'm hoping and praying that it all turn out good. And when you see this, somewhere along here, I'm going to have another little short video. My son-in-law in Florida, you've heard me talk about Gail lots of times. Her husband, her wonderful husband, birthday is today, the 19th. You'll see this on the 20th. So I will have a little video with, with him, with a little happy birthday greeting to him tomorrow. We wanted her to do all of her uh, festivities with her family. And if I put it on the day, he might see it before she had hers tonight. Okay, did I explain that good enough? I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. 
tomorrow is um what is tomorrow? a budget meals under five dollars and i've already got it going and i think you'll enjoy that one i look forward to seeing you tomorrow god bless you i pray god just shines his light of love on you and i'll see you tomorrow like subscribe comment and share